We're in Detroit, a land famous for Eminem, cars, and hot dogs apparently. I got my hands on the now iconic Cadillac CT5V Blackwing, an American head turner and what many car nerds consider to be the best sports sedan in the world right now. I also met a Korean guy that dances. Got to try out these world famous Coney Island hot dogs. And I also made some new friends while driving around in my new Cadillac. Hey, that's a beautiful car, man. I've been looking at that thing for about a year. Oh, that yeah. is a beautiful car. Anyways, this is Detroit. This is the new Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. First off, very good color blue, very light. I have to give props to the marketing team or whoever decided to make this car blue because we always are given like cars by other companies and they make them all dark and stuff. But these guys know that to stand out, you gotta have light colors. This car looks awesome. First of all, blacked out grill. But what I think is interesting is they have a lot of lines going behind the pieces. So for example, here you have this line going behind the bumper continues that way and then when you continue this way you'll see that this looks like it's cutting through the blue as well I don't know I think it looks great I think they did a great job with the design in the front this is a sports sedan with more horsepower than a Lamborghini Huracan Lamborghini Huracan Evos have about 640 horsepower this has 670 and you can drive people in the back let's take a look so there it is Cadillac badge and again, this is the V. The V actually stands for victory. All right, so very cool feature. The key, see this blue color? It's not exactly the same color as the paint job, right? What it is, is it's matching with the brake calipers. If your calipers are red, they will give you a red key. If your calipers are yellow, they'll give you a yellow key. On the side, you got the V for victory and you have these pretty dramatic side skirts. They actually look pretty cool. Kind of popping out, glossy black, very nice. And the wheels are 19s. Like nowadays, everyone's going much bigger. I don't think that they look disproportionate. I think that even though they're 19s, they actually look great on this car. But what's great about these tires is that they're great for drifting because this is actually a stick shift rear wheel drive. All right, on the back, again, CT5, V for victory, Blackwing. Yeah, the black looks great. A pretty recognizable car when you look at the Blackwing compared to the normal CT5V. Yeah, of course, there's more black pieces. There's just more aggressive in general. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the taillights. You know, V for victory, maybe they're going for like a number one. This car starts at about $90,000. Obviously, with extras and options, you can go up way higher, maybe $110,000. Still cheaper than the M5, but it is a more affordable option if you want 670 horsepower in a, in a sports sedan. All right, let's start off with the back. By the way, before we go inside, we have a little dummy window right there. It's just a black panel. Looks like a window. I guess it looks cool. I guess the target market for a car like this is for people with a young mind that have a family. Maybe some kids, but they still want to drive something fast that sounds great. Yeah, this is a full-on seat. I mean, no getting squished at all. The leather is great. I love the stitching, the patterns. You got the V there as well. This is Alcantara leather. I mean, this is, this is high quality. What I like are the lightweight bucket seats with the Alcantara kind of cover on the back. Okay, let's hop to the good stuff, the front. Now, first things first, stick shift, or Americans call this stick shift. Europeans call it a manual car, or actually a lot of countries will just call it a car, right? I think manual is still the norm for a lot of countries, but stick shift is something that has evaporated in the USA, and I'm very, very happy that they brought this back. It's a lot more fun to drive this. I also have to say there's a lot of carbon fiber everywhere. So if you look at your door, you got carbon fiber on the side. You got carbon fiber right here. It continues through the center. More on the other side. It's kitted out with carbon fiber, but what's strange to me is that you have something super expensive and luxurious like carbon fiber, but then right above it, you have these very basic like plastic pieces. It's a bit strange. By the way, I'm not complaining. I'm being picky, right? Like if we're comparing this to like, yeah, like a, like a BMW M5 or something, they tend to have pretty high quality buttons. You can get this in stick shift or you can get it in a 10 speed automatic. If you do not want to drive this in stick shift, you will have that automatic option. All right. Pretty cool gauge cluster, very aggressive. Now the steering wheel has a lot going on wrapped in leather it's got the race line in the middle carbon fiber 
here as well. So there you have your V button. This basically maxes everything out. So when you press it, you get the ultimate sport steering suspension, you get your shifting. Now what also caught my eye is next to the stick shift, you have this button that says rev match. And I have never seen this anywhere else before. I guess also because we don't do that many stick shifts anymore on this channel. But rev match, basically what it does is if you press it, it'll match the revs of the intended gear. So if you're like in third or fourth gear and you're trying to downshift, it'll match the revs so that you get a smoother transition. Instead of like, you know, just jerking, it might kind of damage the engine. And this is your traction control right there. Just flick that up. You'll go to like inactive. You can go to wet, dry, sport, race, race two. Let's turn uh, the traction control to inactive. And I'm not trying to hint anything, but uh, looks like we got some pretty slippery ground below us. Now that we had our car, we only had one thing left to do. Try out these Coney Island hot dogs that everyone keeps talking about. After parking in Italy with Lamborghinis, parking in the US with a Cadillac, super easy. All right, let's get some hot dogs. All right, so here it is. Everyone's been recommending us to go get a, a Coney dog. We have the American Coney Island on the right for you guys. We have Lafayette. And if you're from Detroit, you can only choose one for life. This is the best hot dog in town. Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And your team Lafayette. Oh, definitely. A little over 100 years ago, a Greek immigrant named Gust Keras opened a hot dog stand in the corner of Lafayette and Michigan Avenue, and it instantly became a hit. He ended up upgrading to a proper restaurant named American Coney Island and invited his brother Bill over from Greece to help out. Instead, Bill decided to open up his own hot dog shop right next door and called it Lafayette. And so the rivalry began. American Coney Island is bigger, more decorated and colorful, while Lafayette doesn't even have a website. I usually side with the underdogs, so we went to Lafayette first. All right, we heard that you have the best hot dogs in town. The best in the country. Okay, okay, pretty good, pretty good. So we'll have two, two Coney dogs. Everything. Everything. Put all the special sauces, whatever you got. Okay, give me two singles, have a seat. Okay, all right, sounds good. Oh, you making YouTube? Oh yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, very. Good. This is uh, what what country? What country are you from? Korea. Korea. Do you have this in Korea? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Korea. but this is better maybe. Uh, actually, Korea is better. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, cool. <laughs> this video took a unexpected turn. We started with a Cadillac, and now we're eating hot dogs at Coney Island. Well, this is great. Anyways, I'm happy. Let me know what you guys think of the car and the hot dogs. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time.